for the date of this video marks roughly the 18 month anniversary since I started learning Japanese and since I started I've got a lot of questions from people in my classes, people in language exchanges, just general language learners and since I started this channel I've gotten a lot of questions uh, quite specifically about Wanikani so I wanted to cover some of the questions about that service and then I'll go through some of the more common questions I get out and about on a daily basis. How many kanji can you learn with Wanikani? At current, Wanikani covers 2,027 kanji, which is about 150 less than the complete Joyo kanji set. So you're basically learning like 95% of everything you're realistically ever going to see. It also covers 2,690 vocabulary words, which you learn kind of in tandem as you progress your levels and you learn the kanji. How many kanji do you do daily or weekly, or does it depend? I'd say the answer to that question actually lies in the question itself uh, and it really does depend on how much time you've got. Realistically, you know, you could learn 10, 20, even 30 new kanji in a day. Um, the way Wani Kani is set up though is it won't let you learn more than a certain amount of kanji at a time and it's usually around 31 or 32 I believe. Um, most levels are around 35 kanji but it doesn't let you learn the whole level in one block. But roughly you could learn all of those in one day and then if you manage to get all the cards right over the next seven days you'll level them up sufficiently and then move on to the next level so realistically you can do about 30 to 35 a week and then you know if you don't get any of them wrong then you can level up again and then just repeat that cycle so yeah that's kind of how many you can do not so much per day but per week having completed the Wanikani course can you read Japanese books from authors like Mishima or Murakami are you able to understand Japanese films or shows without subs what do you think of Japanese compared to English? Okay, well that's like a, that's a big question, that's three questions in one. Um, honestly, to answer the first question, I don't read that many books. Uh, I never did in English, I'm just not a reading kind of guy. Um, I listen to a lot of music and I prefer watching films and videos and things like that. So, um, I don't apply my language learning in that sense. Um, I would say that reading if you're going to base it on how much have you done on Wani Kani, that's really not the approach to go because reading mainly comes down to grammar. Especially something like Mishima, which is more poetry or kind of like heavy novel, which is, you know, complicated. Um, so if you think about learning that in another, like any language, uh, it's going to typically take you a long time to get to that point. And it's not just about learning the kanji and learning the words or even the grammar. It's, it's all, almost like you have to understand the culture to understand a lot of what is being written. The second question, the answer is no. I'm still not at the point where I can understand films or shows without subtitles. Um, I can sometimes, you know, the odd sentence can fly by and I might have been like, oh, I didn't actually look at the subtitles and, you know, kind of have a little moment of uh, excitement at myself. But then I'm immediately shot down as uh, the rest of the scenario unfolds and I can't understand any of it. So, uh, no, I can't understand without the subs, but because I've used Wanikani so much and learnt so much, um, it definitely helps with that aspect of things because to read in Japanese quickly is quite difficult, especially because it's one of the fastest languages in the world. So if the people are talking fast, the subtitles move quite quickly. So if you can read at that pace, uh, that certainly helps. So take from that what you will, I guess. Question three, what do you think about Japanese compared to English? That is a question that could have a very, very long answer, so I'll try and keep it really, really short. English is my native language, and Japanese, to me, is considered a Tier 3 language. So, Tier 1 languages are all the kind of Roman-based languages, Spanish, French, Italian. Uh, tier 2 are things like Russian, Hungarian, Romanian, Polish. Um, different character set and quite different grammar, but they still have that kind of European root. Um, and then Tier 3 languages are Japanese, Chinese, Korean, so a lot of the Asian languages, um, mainly because they have completely different character sets, the grammar is completely different, uh, and all the pronunciations are completely different, so um, to compare them is almost impossible, um, but in a way, the thing I love about Japanese actually is it's almost like, to me, it's almost like maths, and I don't know if that's uh, kind of the logical side of my brain speaking, but I sometimes feel like Japanese sentences can sometimes be kind of almost equated to an equation 
because in English you have a lot of these kind of little nuances that can sometimes if you just scramble everything up it can really change the uh, meaning of the sentence but in Japanese you can often put a lot of the the main parts of the sentence in different orders and as long as you've got the verb at the end correct then everything kind of falls into place and I kind of feel like that's kind of like a mathematical equation where you can often change numbers around but as long as you put the right symbols in place the answer always comes out the same um, I don't know maybe that's a bit of a bad answer but that's kind of how it works in my head um, it's very fun though, it's a very fun language and I love the way it sounds um, and obviously to me it sounds a lot more interesting than English <laughs> Would you still recommend Monikani for learning kanji? Does it help you retain them in the long term memory? As you're learning the meaning onyomi and kunyomi does it not become confusing and somewhat overwhelming? I'd say definitely I think it's worth it and if you invest the time into it you'll definitely get a big reward out of it um, Does it help in terms of long term memory? Absolutely Before I started this uh, I remember looking at all the kanji thinking that there was no way, there was no way in hell that I could remember over 2,000 random little, to me at the time they looked just like little pictures, you know, and I had no understanding of how they were constructed or, you know, any of the origins of any of them, and I thought this is impossible. Um, but now I've completed the one in of course, yeah, I do my daily reviews and things like that, but it's, they stick, they really do, you know, there's the odd ones that slip out of my memory, or well, sometimes there's a couple of kanji that look very, very similar to each other. But overall, the yeah, they, they stick, absolutely. With the onyomi, konyomi thing, um, I think a lot of people that haven't studied that many kanji tend to overthink that system. And I did myself. When I first started, I thought, oh my god, there's all these little pictures I need to remember. But on top of that, they have several readings for each one. And it just, it was overwhelming at the, in the beginning. But... What I would suggest to you, and it will really kind of help take the stress out of your studying, is just don't think about onyomi and kunyomi. If you're doing something like wanikani, when you learn the new kanji, it gives you the most common reading. With some that might be the onyomi, with others that might be the kunyomi. So just learn whatever it gives you. Um, and then the next time you see that kanji and you're learning like a new vocabulary, and it's got a different reading to the one you initially learned, they will teach you a new reading. But what you'll quickly find is you start to notice patterns um, and when you start to see words that are just like, you know, kanji and kanji or kanji hiragana and kanji, if it's a mix of different types of characters, you just start to remember. Um, I can't really quite explain it properly, but it's almost like sometimes when I'm reading things, it's like I understand it, but I almost kind of can't believe it. I feel like I, I don't even remember learning that, I just know it. Um, and that's, I mean, that's a really incredible feeling. But that's just kind of the result of just putting that time in every day and just, you know, grinding out. But like I say, don't worry about Anyomi Kunyomi. Uh, it really does sink in kind of automatically after a few months. Is Wanikani worth the money? Yes. Do you think I can learn Japanese just by watching anime? No. Do you take lessons? I do take lessons. I've been taking lessons pretty much since I started. Maybe I had the first month was kind of solo. Um, you know, I just kind of went, learnt the basics, katakana, hiragana, read a couple, maybe first two or three chapters of Genki 1, um, just to ground myself, um, and then yeah, moved into a group class, um, but recently, actually about three weeks ago, I've gone from the group class, so I'm now having private lessons, um, but that's just down to the fact that I kind of, I've almost, I feel like I kind of outpaced the group lessons, but also, I've got to that point now where I know enough that I can really kind of self-analyse and see my own flaws uh, without having to have them pointed out to me. So in that sense, when I have a private lesson, I can go to the class kind of loaded with questions that I really want to specifically ask. And, you know, I don't really have to worry about other people in the class and what kind of level their comprehension is or whatever. So um, I think anyone would say that obviously private tuition is always the best. It obviously costs more money, but you know, I think that once you've got to a level where you've gone through the basics and you need to really kind of pinpoint your own weaknesses, then that's where the, the group lesson kind of fails you because it covers just a, such a broad scope of uh, criteria. How long do you study every day? I study very, very roughly two hours a day. Um, a lot of people look at me like I'm crazy when I say that, but I think that they think 
that I just sit down like at six o'clock and I just study till eight o'clock every day without fail. But what I'm actually doing is just studying for like 15, 20 minutes just throughout the day. And then by the time I've gone to bed at night, it's clocked up to roughly two hours. So I wake up in the morning, before I go to work, I put on a coffee and I do 15 to 20 minutes of either Wiley County reviews or I read some news or something like that. Just something that's a bit easy uh, to help my brain wake up. Um, then later at work, a tea break, you know, I can do like 10 minutes, I have a cup of tea, do some more flashcards or read something. Lunch break, I tend to use this time to study grammar because it's when I'm most awake. Um, it's the middle of the day, I've been working for four hours so kind of my brain is engaged and um, you know I'm kind of the most alert that I will be in that day and especially before I eat because as soon as I've eaten in the middle of the day I just get super super lazy and it's just game over for studying. After work um, that's kind of like fair game so from six o'clock till maybe like 12 when I get to bed um, I might fit anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour in but that can be anything I might try and watch some drama show with subtitles on maybe we'll play some games with you know, subtitles or something like that. It just kind of depends on what I feel that my brain can handle in that day. Um, and I just kind of play it by ear. The main takeaway from that question, I think, is just to not push yourself beyond your limits because that just leads to an effective study. It's much better to study for 15 minutes every day than to study for two hours every day, but you're not really taking anything in and remembering it. So what I would recommend is just to figure out your own limits. How long in each day can you realistically spend concentrating on studying and then try and break that time up into effective 20 or 15 minute you know time periods for just kanji, just vocabulary, just grammar points and speaking and listening, all those different kind of things and then try and mix up those activities throughout the week. Why don't you make videos in Japanese? Well honestly I'm, I'm not good enough that's the truthful answer um, and one I don't want to make a fool of myself and two I don't want to be one of those people that you know, writes down a script of translated Japanese, reads it to the camera and then edits it all to make it look like, oh, I just read something really fluently and, you know, that's just, you know, that's lying to you guys, it's lying to myself um, and I don't want to portray this kind of, like, you know, amazing image of, like, I am really good at Japanese. I'm really bad at languages, I think, actually, I've discovered since learning Japanese. Um, so, you know, I'm just going at my own pace and that's kind of half of the point of this channel is just to kind of document that fact, um, you know, and give kind of encouragement to anyone that's kind of below my level or just starting out, you know. So I don't want to be like, oh, you can learn and become fluent in 18 months. Some people can, you know, I've met people that have literally studied for a year and they speak amazingly, but I can't, that's just not me. I'm sorry, I've let you all down, but hey ho. Okay, so that just about covers it for today. Um, I hope you found those answers interesting. If you've got any more questions, then please leave them down in the comments of this video. And, you know, if I get enough questions together, I will do another video for you guys in the future. And until next time, thanks for watching. If you like this video, then please click the little thumbs up down there. Consider sharing this video and subscribe to Kantan Japan if you haven't already. We also have a Patreon page set up uh, where you can come and support us if you like what we do here and want to see more content from the channel. And you can sign up from as little as a dollar a month, so please head over there, the link is down in the description. And thank you for watching.